Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today, I'm just outside my door in my backyard. And I need to tell you, man, I'm fascinated by the plants that grow up in this yard. It was a clear-cut area, bulldozed over to create a septic system. And since then, I've had poor soil, but such a great variety and diversity of things that come up in this yard. Some of them native, many of them non-native, many of them brought here by European settlers some time ago. The plant I'm going to feature today is blooming right now. And if it's blooming here, it's probably blooming in an empty lot or in your yard or a fence row or a field near your house whether you live in northeast north america or europe or asia you're gonna see these plants and these are the hawkweeds and the hawkweeds are blooming now and they have brilliant yellow flowers that at first look like dandelion flowers from a distance, but they're actually the hawkweeds. I'm gonna show you three hawkweeds. Two of them are non-native. King devil hawkweed or yellowed king devil hawkweed, mouse-eared hawkweed, and then a quick look at a native hawkweed called rattlesnake weed. I'll show you how to identify these species, give you some background and biology and ethnobotany and talk about the history of these plants and its uses and how they got their name. So stay tuned. First, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the hawkweeds in general. Many of the hawkweeds are from Europe and Asia, as I pointed out in my intro. And there are, depending on which botanists you talk to, there are tens of thousands of species or maybe a thousand species with many subspecies. It's a bit of a taxonomic mess when you're discussing the species and types of hawkweeds because the hawkweeds will interbreed freely. They hybridize, they crossbreed between natives and non-natives. So it's a little bit tricky getting an absolute identification. The scientific name, Heracium, of the hawkweeds comes from the Greek word hyrax, which means hawk. And sometime, at some point, somebody saw some hawks in a field, maybe feeding on a prey item they had just captured. And when they went up there, they saw that it was right among some hawkweeds. So they put two and two together and decided that the hawk must have been eating this plant and this is how it gets its really good eyesight. So some of the hawkweeds subsequently were used to treat people's eyesight and improve their eyesight. Though there's no scientific evidence to back that up that that will actually work. So I'm sitting here with probably the, one of the most infamous of the hawkweeds. This is yellow hawkweed or king devil hawkweed or yellow king devil hawkweed. King devil hawkweed probably got the devil part of its name because farmers had a devil of a time trying to get this out of the ground. It's really a very noxious, invasive weed in many places. For me, it's just another great plant growing and giving me the diversity. And when I see a plant, I need to identify it and learn about its ethnobotany, learn about where it came from and what it does and what species it interacts. So this is a king devil hawkweed, very invasive. Well, what makes it invasive? It produces huge numbers of seeds. They're little black seeds and they're windblown on plumes, just like a dandelion seed. They reproduce by underground stolons and rhizomes and spread across the ground that way. They will reproduce and produce seeds even if they're not pollinated. If you dig these up or break the soil, each broken piece of root can grow up into a new plant. So you're really gonna have a devil of a time with this particular species. To identify king devil hawkweed, you can look at its long stem that's hairy without any leaves on it. You can see that the flowers come out and the buds first are produced in a dense bract with distinctive black hairs. And I'm always fascinated by the contrast between the yellow and the black. They produce pointed lance-shaped leaves that if you look at them up close, they're green on both sides. They uh, have a hairy edge. They have hairs on both the top and the bottom of the leaf. 
And if you break off a stem, most of the hawkweeds will exude a milky white sap. King devil hawkweed, to identify it, look for these bright yellow dandelion flowers. Flowers in the bract, there's a number of them at the top. A long stem and a basal rosette of hairy leaves that are green on both sides and have hairs all along the edges. And of course, also a milky white sap. So now I'm gonna take you up to another spot in my yard where I found another group of hawkweeds growing. And this is called mouse-eared hawkweed. An interesting thing about these mouse-eared hawkweeds that are growing here in a pretty dense mat, in my lawn where it's herbicide-free and I encourage the growth of every plant I can besides fescue, which is a non-native grass with very little wildlife value. But all these different flowers and clovers, and while many are non-native, they do provide diversity and nectar for pollinators and things for things to eat. So this mat of mouse-eared hawkweed shows exactly how this particular species can be invasive. And you can see that this has formed a dense mat all across here that doesn't allow any other plants to sprout or grow up. And like the king devil hawkweed, they spread by stolons and underground rhizomes. They'll move out horizontally across the soil. They're different from the king devil hawkweed in that they only have a single flower at the top of the stem. And you can see that they're much, much shorter. The name comes from the leaf that is green on the front side and you flip it over and it's a kind of a silvery white on the underside and the leaves are small and i have a velvety feel to them like you guessed it a mouse's ear Mouse-eared hawkweed was used medicinally in Europe for uh, thousands of years. I think it still has some herbal uses today by herbalists who use plants like this for medicine. Another fascinating thing that I learned about the mouse-eared hawkweed is that it typically blooms from 8 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon. I can't explain why that pattern is, but it's a very interesting thing to observe. Along with the non-native hawkweeds, I wanted to show you this beautiful specimen of rattlesnake hawkweed. And it got its name rattlesnake hawkweed because it appears to grow everywhere that there are rattlesnakes. And of course, if you have a plant called rattlesnake hawkweed, it's gonna be used as a herbal medication for snake bites. And again, I'm not sure that one has come to fruition. But you remember a lot of these medicinal plants have been shown to have real medicinal properties. For example, the heart medication digitalis originally came from the foxglove flower. This plant is featured by distinct and beautiful red purple outline of its main veins on its leaf. It's just unmistakable. I've seen it growing in forests and woodlands and this particular one I photographed along the Appalachian Trail in Virginia. It's just a really distinctive and beautiful native plant with very distinctive and beautiful leaves. Thank you for watching Nature at Your Door and this episode on hawkweeds. And again, I love to try to show you the things that I think you're going to come across in your place, your yard, your neighborhood, or a local park or forest. You know, the things that are really distinctive. And I love sharing the ethnobotany of these plants and how they're used by Native Americans or the indigenous peoples of the Americas by European settlers and how their history goes back to Europe and Asia as well. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, leave me a like, and I love getting comments from viewers and I answer all my comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.